so what's a concerto marathon? I've been asked by a few orchestras to play as a soloist with them this year. Sí, yo he tenido la profunda suerte. Ciertas orquestas del Reino Unido me han preguntado de tocar de solista. Para mí esto es un sueño increíble. And it, that's amazing, right? But it so happens that they are all around the same time and they're all different repertoire. So I'll be playing seven different concerti. I started with Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto, Skriavin Piano Concerto, Rachmaninoff Second Piano Concerto, the Adin Selvoso Concerto, Ravel, Ingenie, and then Greek, and Beethoven Choral Fantasy, which is a piece that it's not really often performed. But I've only performed before in my life Tchaikovsky and Skriavin, but the rest, they're all new. So my challenge is just to learn five new concerti, while keeping in my fingers two all that I've already performed. So all of this just in a few months. So it's gonna be a huge challenge for me and my personal hell, but also my personal heaven just because it's so wonderful to play one piano concerto. So seven, it's just it's amazing. And the first one out of this is gonna be Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto in B flat. Opus 23. It was composed in 1875? Yes. I'm gonna read because I don't remember anything. It was dedicated to the pianist that premiered it in Boston, and that was Hans von Bülow. I will probably butcher all the names. But yeah, it was rumored that Nikolai Rubenstein was gonna perform it, but Tchaikovsky asked for his opinion on the piano part because he wasn't sure about it, and he was really struggling to come compose it and Nikolai he, he really <laughs> criticized the, the piano part it was impossible to play and he was not happy with it and Tchaikovsky who had that really funny character he took the criticism really bad he wrote in a letter actually that he would not change a note on the piano part that he would just keep it as it is so he would just do whatever he wants just because he didn't take it well. And he did revise the concerto three times, and one of the biggest changes that he did was the arpeggios that he put at the beginning of the concerto that everyone knows. It's like the really famous introduction that happens. It appears in every movie ever, and your parents will recognize it, I'm sure, and you will probably also recognize it if you don't know the piece. And instead of doing this really subtle, Arpeggios and really beautiful also. He, he changed it for really powerful chords that in my opinion are way more memorable and so much more exciting to play at the beginning. It's such a big beginning of the concerto and it really establishes how big the piece is and how majestic it's gonna be. And the piece got a really good reception from the public but not from the critics. And it starts with this really famous introduction and then for me it really feels like a ballet because the way it's structured and, and how it's written really it's almost like the introduction ends and then the soloist comes and starts doing acrobatics and it's the same uh, we start doing all these acrobatics too on the piano and the orchestra in the meantime is like doing this really sweet nice music or really exciting and Tense, right? It's uh, you are always on the spot with this concerto and this octave technique. You, you have to be on top of it, but it's so exciting and technically demanding. You really need to be on top of it, and it's just so much fun, honestly, to play once you are over these technical difficulties. I I, I have so much fun every time, and then the second moment comes, and it's just so sweet, so loving these themes that keep transforming and you borrow from the flute at the beginning. It's so sweet. I love looking at the flute every time that I play it for the first time and with a new orchestra. They always <laughs> look back at me and kind of laugh, but I try not to make them laugh, but it's always so enjoyable. Sometimes I kind of forget to come in just because it's so beautiful, the music. And then it becomes this hellish waltz that is so fast and 
maybe you can behave and maybe you can misbehave a bit and, and be quite like trickster with it and, and really fast and it's really funny because the conductor has to be so on top of it and really focused on you to be able to make the orchestra come with you and it's so nerve wracking for the pianist too because it's quite difficult to play and, and to be precise with it but, and rhythmically precise but it's so much fun and it's so risky and it's so fun and then it ends again in this super beautiful chamber music it's amazing and then the third movement comes and it's this orthodox church hymn almost like from Easter and uh, Tchaikovsky really takes this like slow uh, really legato melodies and makes it pretty jumpy and really exciting and risky and fun. It goes from one extreme to the other, but it's magic what he does with that movement. And it's also always so nerve-wracking and near the end when you are almost in these octaves and the orchestra is just building up, and you're just waiting there and preparing and thinking, how am I gonna do this? Is it gonna be okay? Is it not gonna be okay? But Oh, it's such an exciting ending and it's so beautiful. Every, oh, this concerto is so wonderful to play, it's such a great experience and people love it and there's a reason why. It's one of the best concerto ever. Personally, I have a long history with this concerto. I performed it for the first time, I think in 2020 or 21 in Spain and it was amazing because it was in the National Auditorium of Music and which is one of the biggest concert halls in Spain and also it was my first time playing with orchestra so I was so nervous but also so exciting it, it was such a dream come true for me and the orchestra was so good and everything went so well and I'm so happy with how it ended later I would play it in UK with uh, the Ellsbury Symphony Orchestra that invited me later to do the second out of this concerto marathon, which is with Scriabin Piano Concerto, which I'm so excited about because I've been waiting to play this concerto for so many years now. And then I would play it with the Getafe Symphony Orchestra back in Madrid. Oh, the conductor was amazing and uh, we had so much fun, I think. The first out of the concerto marathon, which is the concert I'm gonna talk about, is with the Watford Symphony Orchestra, which is where the Harry Potter studios are and they were so bubbly, they were so amazing to work with, so good, the sound and amazing, and they really made such a good version with me. I didn't know the, the conductor, but he was really quick to catch my weird rubato and my weird music decisions, and it went so well. And this concert was in honor of the pianist Masa Tayama, who was meant to play in the first place, but sadly he passed away a couple months before the concert. Him and his wife, Rihanna Henderson, organized concerts in their popular piano boat. While the future of the piano boat might be uncertain, if it was ever to resurface or not, please do make sure to show support to Rihanna. I have some footage from the, from the rehearsals. I was a bit bossy, I think. And I, I really like in getting involved with the process of the rehearsals, always being respectful to the conductor, obviously. But I, I like uh, talking to the people in the in the breaks and like even like taking them to rehearse some bits and uh, also getting to know the musicians. They are it's always so interesting for me to work with them, to work with new people, and I just love it. I love the social part of it and playing with an orchestra. It's like suddenly I have. 50, 60, 70 new friends to play with, which is amazing. And yeah, it was quite tiring because I had to travel there, but I don't really mind it. And the rehearsal went quite well, quite quick, everything. And then the concert, I sadly don't have any footage of it, but I do have footage of the National Auditorium one, which I will probably post somewhere here. And um, there's other performances I did there are somewhere around in YouTube, so I'm sure you can find them. And yeah, make sure to go watch it, give it a like. But yeah, for me it's always such a pleasure to play this concerto and I hope to play it a hundred times more if I can. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and that was my take on Tchaikovsky concerto. Make sure to subscribe, give a like and all that. 
And yeah, see you in the next one, which is scaring piano concerto. Bye bye.